So good morning everyone. My name is Tony Maher and I'm the Chief Executive of the National Farmers Federation. I'd like to start by acknowledging Australia's first farmers, the traditional custodians on the land, of the land of which we meet here today, and recognise their continuing connection with the land, water and community. I pay my respects to the people of the Ngunnawal Nation and acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. I'd like to welcome you here to the NFF Congress for 2018. We're delighted that you've been able to join us for what we know will be an energising and interesting couple of days. In the last couple of years at the NFF, we worked hard to build and consolidate our partnerships. We know that we can't do everything in agriculture by ourselves and we acutely recognise the value in working with like-minded organisations. And in that regard, I'd like to welcome and, and acknowledge our gold sponsors and our sponsors for this year's Congress. Our gold sponsors are Coles, KPMG, Prime Super, Rabobank, Vizi and Telstra. Silver sponsors New Farm, Bayer, GRDC, WFI, MBN Co, McDonald's. And our bronze sponsors are Bosch, ACR, Australia Post, Elders, Ridley, Rural Co. And our media partner is Fairfax Agricultural Media. We genuinely do value and appreciate your support and it allows us to put on such a wonderful Congress. So thank you. Can you please join with me in welcoming and thanking our sponsors. <laughs> so our theme for this year's Congress is diversify. And we know Australian agriculture is nothing if not diverse. If I look around the room this morning, we see a completely diverse range of people in agriculture. I had the opportunity and the pleasure yesterday to see a young bunch of um, leaders that we put through a leadership program. Uh, and over the last six or seven weeks, they have developed a This Is Aus Ag uh, social media initiative to try and build the bridge between the community and the agriculture sector. And they, for me, are a classic example of the new innovative thinkers, fresh thinkers coming through in agriculture. So look around the room, I also see past NFF presidents, Brent Finlay. It's great to see you here, Brent. I also see global business leaders, Anthony Pratt from Visi, demonstrating that agriculture and the supply chain are integrally woven together and the partnerships that we can achieve by working with organisations like Visi uh, are enormous and they will allow us to get to that $100 billion vision. And I also see people like Sky Douglas, young emerging female leader, beef farmer from Queensland who again, for me, epitomises the diversity that we have here in agriculture. It is our massive strength, and it's from the people to the regions, whether that's from Alice Springs in the Red Centre, the Wheat Belt of WA, or the Rolling Hills of Tasmania. I had the good fortune to visit all of those places this year, and it, sometimes it really does uh, go unnoticed, the diversity of those regions, but also the stunning nature of Australian agriculture. The wonderful range of products that we know we're renowned for around the world, whether that's wine, cotton, corn, or something you'll hear a little bit more about in the next couple of days, mealworms, and again, demonstrating the, the diversity of Australian agriculture. We grow it all so brewingly, and we know we do it un sometimes under trying conditions. And we know parts of our industry at the moment are experiencing some severe challenges as a result of the drought. There's no doubt that this drought has and will continue to test our industry, but there should also be no doubt that we'll push through these tough times and we'll come out the other side better and stronger than what we were before. And we'll do that through being, being diverse, getting new people into our industry, new business models, new processes, new practices, because that's what agriculture is. We, of course, think Australian agriculture has an extremely bright future. And I hope some of you have seen our $100 billion roadmap for farm gate value by 2030. You'll hear more about that today. And I can assure you that diversity plays a key part in that. Again, that, whether that's through new processes, new innovative ways of using our resources like energy and water, or new markets or new people. We are by nature an assorted sector and we must embrace diversity to reach that $100 billion target. So I welcome you here today. We're genuinely pleased that you've been able to join us, as I say, for what will be an interesting and energising couple of days. 
As I stated earlier, we place great importance on working with our partners and our stakeholders. And we have had no better collaborator and partner in the last 10 months than the Federal Minister for Agriculture, the Honourable David Littleproud. His willingness and effort and commitment to work with Fiona and I and the team at the NFF and the membership has been incredibly welcomed. Minister, your passion, your openness, your commitment to the industry is clear uh, and I'd like to genuinely thank you for your outstanding efforts for the last 10 months or so on what has been, uh, let's be fair, a, a unique year in Australian politics um, and some challenging issues. Murray-Darling Basin, live exports, to name a couple. We uh, sincerely appreciate your commitment and partnership and we value it greatly. Ladies and gentlemen, can you join with me in welcoming the Honourable David Littleproud, Minister for Agriculture and Water Resources. Well, thanks, Tony. And can I firstly also acknowledge the Ngunnawal people, the traditional owners and the land in which we meet, and the first farmers of our nation. I think there's a lot to be learnt from our traditional owners and the practices that they undertook uh, for centuries. Uh, and we should never forget that. Uh, can I say to you, Tony and Fiona, congratulations. Uh, I have worked closely with you because I believed in you. Uh, my job is to leave a legacy. And I, politicians will come and go. People will come and go through the role that I have now. But what will still be here is the NFF. Australian agriculture needs a strong, single voice in Canberra that can walk into the halls of Canberra and hold currency, and standing amongst any politician. And we're seeing that because of the leadership of the NFF. Let me reiterate that. You are getting the best leadership for agriculture and the best thing for regional rural Australia. I'm from regional rural Australia. I've never lived outside my electorate. And I can tell you that unless we have strong leadership in the agricultural sector, then we will not get, we will not get the support and leadership we need to get agriculture to a $100 billion industry. And that's one of the first things I did when signing up uh, as the Agriculture Minister, was to come with the NFF on that journey to start it, and as starting today with that roadmap, is to make sure that the commitment of not only my government, but governments to come. Because what the legacy I need to leave is no matter who comes after me, is that the policy dial does not get shifted wildly, because that doesn't benefit you. And that's what politicians should do. It should be about outcomes, not about politics. And I know we don't get that right in Canberra a lot of the time, but this is more important for the nation, it's more important for the people I represent back in the electorate of Maranoa. So I'm in I intend to continue on that journey to make sure, no matter how long I'm given the privilege to remain the Minister for Agriculture, that I make sure I bring, as best I can, a bipartisan approach uh, in bringing the opposition with me. And I have to acknowledge Joel Fitzgibbon, who will be here, I think, tomorrow, in, in his maturity, along with Tony Burke, in his maturity, and for the first time since Federation, we now have an agreement between Basin States and the Commonwealth on the management of the Murray-Darling Basin. That is enormous, an enormous task, and it proves that your parliament does work, our democracy does work, when we, when we treat it right. And these are the outcomes that the two million Australians up and down the Murray-Darling Basin wanted, and we got it because we worked together. And we have challenges in the agricultural sector. And we challenge, I've been challenged probably since day one, whether it be the Murray-Darling or live trade. The last piece of the live trade puzzle will come together in the next couple of weeks. And we will reset that industry. We will reset that industry to say that it will continue on. Because I can assure you that there is world demand for our live animals. Make no mistake, if you think that we can ban in Australia, you can put your head on a pillow at night and go to sleep and think you've done a great thing, well, you haven't. Because if it's not our sheep and it's not our cattle, it'll be another nation's sheep or cattle. We are Australians and we do it better than anyone else. There are people that sometimes do the wrong thing and when they do the wrong thing, they should be held to account. And from now on, we will hold them to account. And I'll hold the regulator to account to make sure they set the culture because it's too important. It's too important to the industry and particularly the Northern Australia that we don't get it right. I understand the pain that's been caused but there's time to get this right and to move forward, to reset the industry and be proud about it. Be proud about the standards we set because there are nations out there that will fill the void that we will leave behind that will not have the same moral compass that we do around the treatment of animals. 
So we should be proud about what we've done, we should call out the wrongdoing and we should move forward. But I think we've got to be also cognizant of the challenges we face around drought. Uh, my electorate of Maranao has been in drought for eight years uh, and I know there's some frustration in some parts of my electorate around the fact that some of the Sydney media took seven years to find a drought, but nonetheless, uh, we, we have gone through this before and we will come through it again. It's important that our narrative around agriculture is one of, po one of positivity. The reality is we have lost a generation. There has been a drain of generation of human capital, young human capital out of regional rural Australia, and we can afford it no longer. It is so important that our narrative around agriculture is a positive one, that we set, that we set the culture of our own industry about the opportunity that lays ahead of our young people, not only in the traditional pick and shovel jobs, but in the new jobs of research and development in technology. This is a new pillar that opens up opportunity to bring our young people home, bring them back to regional rural Australia and let them understand that there is a pathway, a career pathway, not just jobs in agriculture, there's a career in agriculture and there's a career in regional rural Australia. And the legacy I want to make sure is that those young people right around regional rural Australia have the same opportunity I have. While I wasn't on the farm, I had a career in agriculture, supporting agriculture. And it's just as important as just as many opportunities in careers that lay there for our young people. But it's our narrative that sets, that sets the culture around whether it's attractive or not. I believe for the first time in my 42 years, agriculture is sexy again. No longer should we be saying to our kids, it's all too hard, there's not a quid to be made. There is a quid to be made in agriculture, whether it's on the land or supporting it. But if you're not loud and proud and you don't support the leaders, like Tony and Fiona, then the narrative is lost. I'm a simple redneck politician from Western Queensland. They don't listen to me in metropolitan Australia, but they listen. They listen to your leadership. And that's why we need a strong agricultural voice and strong leadership that Fiona and Tony provided, because they have currency. They have currency not only in the halls of Canberra, but also in metropolitan Australia. We need to be loud and proud about what we do and how we do it. We produce the most environmentally and ethically sustainable food and fibre in the world, and we should never let anyone forget that. We should never let anyone forget that, because if we do, if we do, we will get the legislative impingements on our right to make a dollar. And that's what we can't afford, to take this industry to $100 billion. And I'm committed to that. And one of the pillars I'm very committed about taking that to $100 billion and working collaboratively with the NFF and, and putting my hand up and saying, not only this Australian government, but the next one after the next election needs to sign up to, is around research and development and technology. We've always been the great adopters of technology and research. Now's our time to take to the next level. And I've got to congratulate the 15 RDCs that have taken agriculture to where it is. We were a $36 billion industry eight or nine years ago. We're now a $60 billion industry. We were $63 billion last year. And in fact, despite the drought, ABARES is still predicting we'll get to $60 billion by June 2019. That shows the resilience, but it shows the opportunity that still lays ahead of us. And I've commissioned Ernest and Young to undertake a rural innovation review to look at how we can actually enhance our research and development, attract more foreign capital, more commercial capital, to, in, to make sure that our collaboration between our RDCs gets the best outcomes, to drive the productivity and the efficiencies that you need and the new science and technology that we need. And I'm expecting to do that by the end of the year. You won't be seeing a lot of election promises from me. I expect to deliver. I don't want to sit there and promise something. I want to prove it to you that I've done it. And I can assure you that we will be putting in place that report and implementing it as quickly as we can to give the grunt to the research and development to make Australia a centre of excellence for research and development and technology in agriculture. We should be proud of our people and the human capital we've got. We've got the best in the world but we've got to make sure that we give them the financial capital to support it. So let me say that we do have a bright future and we will, we will make $100 billion. And I will make this commitment to you and the NFF that I will work hand in hand with you. You have my commitment. You have my commitment. And can I say that the Australian government and whatever its persuasion, 
I think, with the leadership that we've seen from the NFF will continue on, and that's, that's what agriculture needs. Can I finally just call out the rural, uh, rural R&D for profit who have really tried to commercialise the research and development and scientific research that we've done. That's where the rubber hits the road. That's where we get the commercial outcomes that we're looking for, to get the return and the investment back into research and development. And can I congratulate them for the work that they've done and proud to finish up by just showing you some of the work they've done in launching this video. But to each and every one of you, can I say thank you? But please, go from here and be loud and proud as ambassadors for agriculture. Support your leadership because we have something to be very proud of. Thank you for having me. When I started work on the farm, you did what Grandad did. That's no longer good enough. The research has actually put the science into it. It really helps the farmer because it's science telling the farmers what to do. Without that funding, we'd be still in the dark ages. Across Australia, the Rural Research and Development for Profit program funds collaborative projects that use cutting edge technology and strategic research to increase productivity at the farm gate. It invests in areas of agriculture that are of critical importance to Australia and its place in the world. Rural R&D for profit is incredibly important because it provides the ground root science that is absolutely transformational in terms of farmer productivity and profitability. Innovative R&D projects are giving our farmers access to the latest research, technology and knowledge management. They are making data more accessible to farmers and giving them tools to help make smarter decisions on farm. From paddock to plate, data is being collected and used in a way that will benefit ultimately the consumer, the, the farmer, the wholesaler, the retailer, um, everyone along that value chain. Funded by the Australian Government and led by Australia's 15 rural research and development corporations, the projects foster collaboration between farmers, scientists, researchers and industry partners. It brings together some of Australia's greatest minds and most progressive producers to take research and innovation out of the lab and onto the farm, delivering tangible outcomes for Australia's farmers. It's not just researchers doing their own little bit of stuff, it's not me doing, doing something separate on farm, it's putting it all together and all together in a way that, that focuses on what really creates value. The R&D projects promote and accelerate the use of technology in agriculture right across the food and fibre supply chain. The projects enhance our natural resources by improving soil health, fertiliser and water use efficiency and resilience to climate events and they help us to understand and manage pest and disease pathways which will minimise biosecurity threats and improve market access for primary producers. But what unites all rural R&D for profit projects is the focus on making innovation both practical and accessible, maximising potential to improve the way we do things on a farm and right across the supply chain. R&D for Profit has really lit a fire under collaboration across the sectors and producers are really loving it. They're finding that diversity of thinking really stimulating. Rural R&D for Profit program has allowed all the industries to actually come together under one project umbrella. We can work together and we can share science, we can share diagnostics and we can share data and data outcomes. Farmers need to be getting smarter and smarter with the tools they're using and this is where this research uh, really comes into that and this, this great program uh, which allows us to bring these new technologies in, these new methodologies in, into a, a farmer friendly approach. What a fantastic video and something for us to keep in the back of our minds as we go through the conference is how can we engage in projects like this. 
My name's Catherine Marriott and I am the MC for the next couple of days. I think just to reflect on some of the things that Minister Littleproud just briefly mentioned to us is it's really heartening to hear bipartisan support for agriculture and the fact that he's working really hard on things like the Murray-Darling Basin, the live export industry, to try and ensure that um, which, whatever happens in the next election, that the NFF is in a really good place uh, to ensure the leadership of our industry going forward. Malcolm Forbes the creator of the very popular Forbes magazine, I think sums it up best when articulating diversity as the art of thinking independently together. Before we go any further, I want to acknowledge the Honourable David Littleproud, Minister for Agriculture and Water Resources, Ms Fiona Simpson, the Chair of NFF, and also the Honourable Joel Fitzgibbon, who I believe will be joining us later, the Shadow Minister for Agriculture and Water Resources. Speakers, moderators, panellists, and of course, all of you who have taken two days out of your lives to join us here today. A little bit of housekeeping. The toilets are up the stairs and to the right. Uh, if you could all just make sure that your mobile phones are uh, turned to silent. If not, it might be a six-pack for the MC a little bit later. The hashtag for the conference, if I could encourage everybody to tweet and share with people that are outside this room what we're learning, what we're talking about, what the hot topics are, the hashtag is NFF Congress, and there'll be live streams up behind me on the screen all day. <laughs> 